My name is Palle Becker Jeppesen. I'm an associate professor at the Department of Medical Gastroenterology at Rigshospitalet in Copenhagen, Denmark. On behalf of my co-authors Petkevich, Messing, Ayer, Seidner, O'Keefe, Forbes, Heinz and Jolson, it's an honor and privilege to present data from our manuscript entitled Tiduglitide Reduces Need for Parental Support Among Patients with Short Bowel Syndrome with Intestinal Failure. Short bowel syndrome results from surgical resection, congenital defect, or disease-associated loss of absorption. Patients with intestinal failure associated with short bowel syndrome require parental support to maintain fluid, electrolyte, trace, element, vitamin, and nutrient balances. Tiduglutide, a depeptidyl peptidase degradation-resistant GLP-2 analog, has been demonstrated to enhance structural and functional integrity of the remaining intestine in short bowel syndrome. Open-label, uncontrolled studies in patients with short bowel syndrome have suggested clinically meaningful reductions in fecal excretions of wet weight of around 700 to 1,000 grams per day and energy of around 1 megajoule per day after treatment with GLP-2 or tiduglutide. The primary objective of this multicenter placebo-controlled phase 3 study was to evaluate whether tiduglutide at the 0.05 mg per kilo per day dose could reduce parental support volume in patients with short bowel syndrome and intestinal failure. As indicated in this study design slide, this was a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled parallel group multinational multicenter two-stage study. The study enrolled patients with short bowel syndrome depending on parental nutrition or IV fluids at least three times per week for at least a year. The parental requirements were optimized and stabilized for up to 16 weeks prior to randomization to accurately establish baseline values for intake and ensure adequate urine output and hydration across patients and clinical sites. During the optimization period, parental support volumes were titrated to a volume of urine between 1 and 2 liters per day. Patients were then randomized to receive tiluglutide at a dose of 0.05 mg per kilo per day or placebo for 24 weeks. During the treatment period, reductions in parental support volumes by 10 to 30 percent of baseline parental support levels were allowed if 48-hour urinary volumes exceeded the baseline values by more than 10 percent. The primary efficacy endpoint was the percentage of responders. Response was defined as a 20 to 100 percent reduction from baseline in weekly parental support volume at week 20 that was maintained at week 24. 86 patients with short bowel syndrome and intestinal failure were randomized and 39 patients in each study group completed the study. There were no significant differences between treatment groups regarding demographics and disease characteristics at baseline. Response was defined as a 20 to 100 percent reduction from baseline in weekly PN IV volume at week 20 that was maintained at week 24. More than twice as many patients in the time arm versus placebo responders at week 24. There were 27 out of 43, that is 63% responders in the tiduglutide group and 13 out of 43, that is 30% in the placebo group with a p-value of 0 0.002. At all visits, change from baseline in actual PNIV volume was greater in the tiduglutide group than in the placebo group. The difference in absolute change between the treatment groups was statistically significant at week 8 and remained significant through the 24 weeks. At week 24, patients receiving tiduglutide had a mean weekly PNIV volume reduction of 4.4 liters per week, whereas this was 2.3 liters per week in patients receiving placebo. The baseline PNIV volume was 12.5 liters in patients receiving tiduglutide and 13.4 liters per week in patients receiving placebo. A significantly greater number of tiduglutide-treated patients achieved at least one additional day per week independence from PNIV when compared with placebo-treated patients.
The number of patients with treatment emergent adverse events, serious adverse events or discontinuations due to serious adverse events was comparable between treatment groups. The most frequently reported adverse events in the tadugletide group were of gastrointestinal origin, that is abdominal pain, nausea, gastrointestinal stoma complication and abdominal distinction. In summary, this was the largest double-blind randomized placebo-controlled trial performed to date in patients with intestinal failure and short bowel syndrome. Ciduglutide at the point 0.05 mg per kilo per day dose was superior to placebo in significantly reducing parental support volume requirements in these patients. Ciduglutide met the primary efficacy endpoint of the study. Thus, 63% of tadugletide treated patients achieved a 20 to 100% reduction in weekly parental support volumes at weeks 20 and 24, compared with 30% of placebo treated patients with a p value of 0.002. 54% of tadugletide treated patients were able to eliminate at least one day of parental support, compared with 23% of placebo treated patients, again with a p value of 0.005. Ciduglutide was well tolerated, gastrointestinal related adverse events were the most frequently reported events and they are consistent with the known mechanism of action and the underlying condition. In conclusion, ciduglutide was well tolerated and facilitated reduction in parental support volume and provided days of parental support in patients with short bowel syndrome and intestinal failure. With this last slide, I would like to acknowledge and congratulate all these fine investigators on their magnificent achievement in contributing to the conduction of the largest multicenter multinational study ever performed in short bowel patients with intestinal failure.